According to the book of Exodus, the story of the Ark dates back to ancient Egypt. A sacred box to hold these tablets of the commandments. Or you've proven that something is down there. Now we've got to dig it up. The book of Exodus says that the Ark's history goes back to ancient Egypt. The Ark was a holy box that held the tablets of the Ten Commandments. We already know something is down there. Now we need to dig it up. This is a huge find that has shocked the whole world. Scientists and archaeologists have opened the Ark of the Covenant after a long time of being locked. People of all religions and countries have been fascinated by this ancient artifact for thousands of years, as it has been kept secret and revered. A lot of people had made guesses about what it said and how powerful it might be. The truth about the Ark has finally been revealed after thousands of years of secrecy. This sheds light on one of history's most mysterious objects. In the Old Testament of the Christian Bible, the Hebrew Bible talks about the mythical Ark of the Covenant. The Bible says that the Israelites built it at God's order while they were wandering in the desert after leaving Egypt. The Ark, which was made of AAAA wood and covered in gold, was thought to be a holy place to keep the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments that Moses got on top of Mount Sinai. People thought the Ark was the place where God lived on earth, so it was more important than just a box for bringing holy objects. Its appearance in the tabernacle and later the Temple of Solomon showed that the Israelites had a special relationship with their God. The Bible says that it had supernatural powers that caused walls to fall down at the Battle of Jericho and killed anyone who tried to touch it. The Ark isn't mentioned in historical records after the Babylonians destroyed Solomon's temple in Jerusalem in 587 BCE. This has led to many ideas and guesses about what happened to it. Some people think it was kept to keep it from being destroyed, while others think it was stolen or destroyed. The Ark of the Covenant has been a mystery for hundreds of years. For many years, the idea of opening the Ark has both interested and upset people. Many people have thought about what might be inside this old relic and what might happen if it is opened. Explorers and archaeologists first went to the Holy Land in the 1800s to look for biblical items. This was the start of the search to open the Ark. Sir Leonard Woolley, a British historian who worked in the ancient city of Ur in the 1920s, was one of the most well-known people in the search for the Ark. Even though he didn't find the Ark itself, his work helped us understand the time period in which it might have been found. Over the years, there have been a huge number of expeditions and investigations. These have often been driven by religious zeal and the desire to find the divine secrets hidden in the Ark. A group of historians, archaeologists, and scientists from different fields work together to make the latest discovery. The archaeologist and Bible history expert Dr. Sarah Reynolds led the group as they set out to find and open the Ark of the Covenant. It wasn't easy to make the trip because it needed a lot of study into the past, money, and the help of religious and government leaders. The important find was made in a secret room under the Church of St. Mary of Zion in Axum, in a remote part of Ethiopia. Ethiopian traditions and tales that go back hundreds of years have linked this area to where the Ark might be. For many hundreds of years, Ethiopian Christians had made the church their holy place. The team got into the hidden chamber, which had been locked for hundreds of years, with approval from the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The world watched with bated breath as experts got ready to open the Ark. It was the moment of truth. Scholars, religious leaders, and media from all over the world came to see the opening of the Ark, which was a very important event. With safety gear on, Dr. Sarah Reynolds carefully approached the ancient artifact that hadn't been opened since the time of King Solomon. You could feel the excitement as she started the careful process of breaking the Ark's complex seal. When the Ark's lid was opened, what was inside was truly amazing. Some people thought that the inside of the Ark held mythical riches and supernatural powers, but it actually held a collection of old artifacts, manuscripts, and religious relics. There were pieces of papyrus scrolls, pottery, and figures made of gold that were decorated with a lot of small details. The most important thing that was found inside the Ark was a group of well-preserved scrolls that had biblical texts and historical stories on them. These scrolls tell us more about the ancient Israelites' religious practices, customs, and important events in history. They taught us a lot about how religious texts were made and how cultural information was passed down in ancient times. 
Even though it didn't show any supernatural or divine powers, the opening of the Ark of the Covenant was a very important event in history and culture. The manuscripts and objects that were found inside gave us a unique look into the religious and cultural life of ancient Israel. Scholars were able to learn more about where the Hebrew Bible came from and how religious ideas changed over time in the area because of them. The find also made people wonder what part the Ark played in the worship of the ancient Israelites. The Ark did not have the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments that are mentioned in the Bible, but it did have other things that suggested it may have been used to store religious books and other holy things. This new information tested what people thought they knew about the Ark's function and purpose. The opening of the Ark had a huge effect on faith groups all over the world. For Jews and Christians, the finding brought up old arguments about how true the Bible's stories are to history and what the Ark means to them. Some saw it as a reminder of their religious history, while others were confused by the strange things that were in the Ark and the supernatural stories that went along with it. Ethiopian Orthodox Christians were happy about the discovery because it proved what they had always thought, that the Ark was safe in Axum. For them, Opening the Ark proved that their traditions were holy and that their church had a historical link to biblical events. The finding of the Ark's treasures changed the areas of archaeology and history in big ways. It taught us a lot about the material culture and religious practices of ancient Israel. It also helped us understand how religious books are passed down and cultural heritage is kept safe over thousands of years. The fact that the Ark was in Ethiopia also made people wonder about the history of the Israelites and the kingdom of Axum in Ethiopia. Some scholars thought that the Ark might have been brought to Axum during a time of political unrest in the area, while others thought it might have been a copy made to honor the biblical artifact. The papers that had been carefully kept for hundreds of years were one of the most important things found in the Ark. These scrolls have both biblical texts and historical stories that show how the ancient Israelites lived and what they believed. As experts carefully took these scrolls apart and looked at them, they found a wide range of writings, from psalms and prophetic books to history accounts. The scrolls also had information about everyday life in ancient Israel, such as farming methods, trade deals, and census results. These everyday details painted a vivid picture of the culture that wrote and respected these holy writings. As more was found, it became clear that the Ark had held both religious and historical records, showing how important it was to ancient Israelite society in many ways. Along with the scrolls, the Ark held an amazing assortment of artifacts and treasures. There were pottery pieces, figurines made of gold with elaborate designs, and pieces of papyrus scrolls. These artifacts taught us a lot about the material society of the time, showing how skilled and creative the people of ancient Israel were. The fact that there were pieces of texts inside the Ark was one of the most interesting things about the find. It looked like these pieces were torn and damaged pieces of bigger scrolls. This made people wonder how the books got into the Ark and why they are broken up. The study of these pieces is very important for putting together the whole writings and figuring out what happened in the time they were written. When the contents of the Ark were made public, religious groups all over the world thought deeply about them. For both Jews and Christians, the finding made them question what they thought they knew about the Ark's supernatural powers and its place in biblical history. Some religious experts said that the Ark's meaning didn't come from what it held, but from how it was seen as a way for God to be present and make a promise. People have generally thought that the Ark held the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments on them. When this wasn't found, it caused theological debates about what sacred relics are and how they fit into religious faith. Some people said that the lack of such famous artifacts showed how important spiritual ties with God were over material ones. The discovery of the Ark's contents had bigger effects on history. In addition to its religious importance, it gave scholars a lot of information to study and analyze, which gave them new ways to look at the past of the ancient Near East. More in-depth study, dating, and analysis would be done on the scrolls in particular. The discovery of golden figures and pieces of papyrus scrolls also led to more questions about how different cultures in the area interacted and changed over time.
The figurines' complicated designs suggested that different religious and artistic styles worked together in a complicated way, which goes against the idea that ancient Israelite culture was one big thing. When the Ark was found in Ethiopia, it started new conversations about the history of the Israelites and the kingdom of Aksum in Ethiopia. According to Ethiopian legend, the Ark was taken to Aksum to be kept safe, and the opening of the Ark was seen as proof of this story. In the past, some scholars thought that the Ark might have been in Ethiopia because of historical events, like when foreign forces took over Jerusalem, or because people wanted to protect it during times of trouble. Others said it was possible that the Ark in Ethiopia wasn't the real thing, but rather a copy or a symbolic representation made to respect the real one. New technology was very important for studying what was in the Ark. Multispectral imaging and high-resolution scanning were some of the advanced imaging methods used to find details that were hidden in the scrolls and objects. Scholars were able to read faded texts better and learn more about the materials used in the old world by using these techniques. Carbon dating and other methods were used to get a good idea of how old the objects and scrolls were. Radiocarbon dating of organic materials found in the Ark helped figure out when the collection came from and what time period these things were from when they were put in the Ark. The translation of old texts was one of the hardest parts of learning what was in the Ark. There were Hebrew, Aramaic, and even some rare languages on the scrolls. Linguists and biblical scholars worked hard to figure out what languages and dialects were used in these books so that others could read the information they contained. Not only religious stories were found in the translated texts, but also historical accounts, law codes, and even personal letters. They gave experts a lot of different information about life in ancient Israel, which helped them piece together the social, political, and cultural picture of the time. The scrolls inside the Ark of the Covenant gave us an interesting look into the daily lives of the Israelites in the past. They talked about ceremonies, farming methods, and trade deals. Some papers had lists of names and family trees on them, which showed how families were organized and how people were related to each other. Others went into more depth about how ancient Israel was governed and how its laws were made, which shed light on how early legal codes came to be. The religious books inside the Ark helped us learn more about what the Israelites believed and how they lived. Some of them were songs, prayers, and explanations of holy texts. These writings put the religious ceremonies and practices in the Hebrew Bible in their proper historical context, which helped us learn more about ancient Israelite spirituality. The historical stories in the scrolls led to some of the most important discoveries. These stories told from first-hand tales of important events in ancient Israelite history, such as wars, migrations, and the start of religious traditions. The Ark of the Covenant seemed to have been where these history records were kept safe. One very interesting story told about the Israelites' time in captivity in Babylon and what they went through there. The text told a moving story about how much they missed their home country and how hard it was for them to live in a new one. These kinds of stories gave us a more human view of historical events by putting us in touch with the feelings and problems of people in the past. There were also some problems and disagreements when the items of the Ark were found. The differences between what was in the Ark and the supernatural stories that went along with it made people doubt the truth of the Bible's stories. Some people said that the Ark wasn't a source of supernatural power, but rather a sign of religious faith. Religious groups talked about what the opening of the Ark meant because it called into question long-held beliefs about the relic's importance. Some people saw the new discoveries as a chance to learn more about their spirituality, but others had a hard time finding a way to combine them with their religious beliefs. The scientists and historians who were carefully studying the Ark were struck by how well it had been preserved. The acacia wood with gold on top had stood the test of time amazingly well. This amazing preservation made the find even more important historically, as it let experts study not only what was inside the Ark, but also how it was made. Not only did the Ark of the Covenant hold things, it was also a beautiful piece of art. On it were elaborate carvings and patterns that had been hidden from view for hundreds of years. When these carvings were found again, they gave us a look into the artistic tastes of the ancient Israelites. Scenes from the Bible were carved into the stone, like the Red Sea splitting and the building of the tabernacle.
The ancient Israelites saw the Ark as holy because it had intricate designs on its surface that told stories and held religious meaning. The Ark did not hold the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments on them, but its appearance in the tabernacle and later the Temple of Solomon was a sign of the promise God made with the Israelites. It stood for the place where the gods lived on earth and the real link between the human world and the spiritual world. When the Ark was opened, it showed how important symbols are in religious faith. Even if the Ark's contents didn't match the fantastic stories that are often linked to it, it would still serve as a sign of faith. For many, it was a reminder of how religious objects can still move people to worship and be devoted. There is still disagreement among historians and experts about how the Ark of the Covenant got to Ethiopia. Ethiopian legend says that it was brought to Axum during the rule of Menelik, who was the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Ethiopian religious books and stories have told this story for hundreds of years. Some ideas say that the Ark might have been taken to Ethiopia during times of political unrest in ancient Israel to keep it safe from attackers from other countries. Some people think it was hidden to keep it from being destroyed when Babylon took over Jerusalem. Besides the scrolls and golden figurines that were found inside the Ark, experts were also interested in other items. Among these were jewelry with a lot of small details, pots, tools, and other artifacts that showed how people lived and what they did that were discovered in the Ark over many years. The chains, rings, and earrings were all very well made, and some of them had religious symbols and writing on them. These things gave us hints about the religious practices and personal decorations of people who were connected to the Ark. The Ark's contents were well preserved, but the fragile nature of old objects and texts made the job of preservationists very hard. Over time, the air, light, and humidity had worn down the sensitive items. Experts in conservation and preservation had to carefully check each item's state and use special methods to stop it from getting worse. When the Ark of the Covenant was opened, it brought up moral questions about how to handle and own old religious and cultural artifacts. As the guardian of the Ark, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church was very important in deciding what would happen to these valuables. There were arguments about sending artifacts back to where they came from and sharing these historical treasures with the whole world. When the Ark was opened, it started a new era of research into the history, culture, and faith of the Palestinian people. Researchers from many fields would continue to look into what this finding means for studying the Bible, archaeology, and the history of the ancient Near East. More study is needed to find out exactly how the Ark was built, what the carvings on it mean, and when and why they were made in history. Studies from different fields would help us understand how the things in the Ark relate to the larger cultural and religious changes in the ancient world. When the Ark of the Covenant was opened, it was a reminder of how much history and culture we all share. It made people talk about religious tolerance and how important it is to respect and understand the beliefs and traditions of other faiths. The discovery sparked interest around the world, which gave religious groups a chance to talk to each other and show respect. The discovery of the Ark had a huge effect on education that went far beyond museums and research centers. The discoveries from the Ark were taught in schools, universities, and other educational programs all over the world. This sparked a new interest in studying the Bible, archaeology, and ancient history. When the Ark's contents were made public, new academic fields and courses were created to study the texts, artifacts, and history connected to the Ark of the Covenant. Students and experts alike jumped at the chance to learn more about this ancient artifact and its mysteries, which helped us all understand the past better. The opening of the Ark of the Covenant had a huge effect on tourism around the world. Ethiopia was already famous for its varied landscapes and rich cultural history. A lot of people came to see the Ark and visit the country's historical sites. A lot of people from different religions went to Ethiopia to see the Ark, which proved that it is a spiritually important place. The large number of tourists also helped the economy of the area, and local communities were able to benefit from the extra money made by tourists. The Ark's opening inspired ongoing conversations about religious tolerance and interfaith collaboration. It encouraged individuals of different religions to join together to study shared history, cultural legacy, and the significance of religious relics in developing belief systems. 
Faith leaders and intellectuals engaged in conversations aimed at improving mutual understanding and respect among various faith communities. The Ark's discovery acted as a catalyst for greater acceptance of many religion traditions and encouraged people to find common ground in their mutual regard for sacred relics and historical artifacts. As the treasures and scrolls from the Ark underwent rigorous preservation, conservationists encountered major hurdles in conserving the delicate pieces. The ancient materials, such as papyrus and fragile fabrics, required careful care to prevent corrosion and ruin. Special climate-controlled storage facilities were built to maintain the necessary environmental conditions for the long-term preservation of the objects. Conservationists created new procedures for cleaning, preserving, and conserving the fragile scrolls and artifacts, guaranteeing that they would be available to future generations. The Ark of the Covenant, will forever stand as a symbol of human curiosity and the ongoing desire for knowledge. Its finding underlined the need of preservation, collaboration, and cultural exchange in the field of historical research. The riddles that cloaked the Ark for millennia ultimately gave way to a fuller understanding of ancient history and the complex interaction of faith, culture, and symbolism. As the globe proceeded to investigate the ramifications of the Ark's opening, it became evident that this incredible event had transformed the way we treated our shared cultural and religious heritage. The Ark's legacy would continue to inspire future generations to study the mysteries of the past, creating a better appreciation for the rich tapestry of human history.